Hello, so once again, um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to uh, everybody. Uh, whatever it is, what, whatever time it is that you are watching this uh, video. I am uploading this video as additional or supplementary material to our module entitled Developmental Dimensions of Learning, which is one of the uh, topics lined up in uh, our subject, uh, Facilitating Learner-Centered Learning. So, for this, for this uh, particular module, our um, objectives are as follows. At the end of this module, you should be able to do the following. First, describe each of Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Discuss the major cognitive developments in its stages, and explain why it is important for teachers to understand how cognitive development occurs. So, as already mentioned, our discussion for today will focus on the developmental dimensions of learning. Um, well, to start with, no, it is important for teachers like us, <coughs> excuse me, for, for future teachers like you, how uh, people think, particularly how children think, particularly how our learners uh, think. We should be able to understand how their minds work because our learning experiences, the activities inside the classroom, the topics, the strategies we are going to use, the um, assessment we are going to um, utilize uh, should all be consistent or congruent with their uh, cognitive or developmental states um, so that uh, the, the task will be appropriate for them to do or for, uh, perform. The task will, ne will neither be too easy nor too difficult for them. No. It is not it will not be too easy for them because the activities are, are too simple uh, with regards to their uh, developmental level, nor is it beyond their cognitive abilities. So uh, let us discuss this. Uh, individuals learn best when material is appropriate to their developmental level and is presented in an enjoyable and interesting way. See? Individuals learn best. Our pupils, our learners will learn best uh, when the material, meaning the, the things that they will learn, the content, no? Uh, the learning experiences, the learning activities inside the classroom uh, are all appropriate to their developmental level. Much more so if these learning activities and learning experiences are presented in an enjoyable, in an interesting way, uh, in a fun way, you know, or even in challenging ways. Because children love challenges, they love to compete. And because individual development varies across uh, different factors or areas or aspects, no? such as the intellectual, social, emotional, and physical domains, uh, we would expect that achievement will also uh, vary. Different children demonstrate different 
levels of academ academic performance or academic achievement. There are those who learn fast. There are those who take more time to learn the material, the content, the topic, the lesson. There are those who just need a few examples and they already get that concept. There are children, on the other hand, that need or who need a lot of examples, a lot of explanation, a lot of discussion before they understand the lesson. So, iba iba po ang kanilang pagkakatuto. Why? The reason is that they have different intellectual capabilities. They, they come from different social and cultural backgrounds. They have different uh, they, have di they have different feelings or emotions towards different things. They have different temperaments which all affect the way they would learn. They differ physically. Some children can learn fast because they are physically capable of uh, processing the material. Say for example, some children may, may um, um, be suffering from some uh, uh, physical um, challenges. Hindi naman siya eksaktong bingi, medyo mahina na ang kanyang pandinig. So he would uh, need the teacher to speak a little bit louder. Kasi kung mahina magsalita si sir or si ma'am, hindi niya marinig ng mabuti. And uh, because he did not uh, hear the explanation, he cannot process the information properly. So things like those. So iba-iba ang academic performance or academic achievements ng mga bata. Uh, because they have different intellectual abilities, they come from different social, cultural, and even family backgrounds. They feel, they feel differently towards different things. They differ physically. And that is the reason why they manifest or demonstrate uh, different levels of academic achievement or academic performance. Um, Overemphasis on one type of developmental readiness, such as reading readiness, for example, may preclude learners from demonstrating that they are more capable in other areas of performance. Understanding how children develop will tell us that development is not one dimensional. Development happens in all areas of the child's personality and we should be aware of these things. Because if we focus on just one area, alimbawa, poro readiness, poro reading, uh, reading, readiness, we will focus on reading all the time. All the time, poro reading exercises, poro reading lessons. Reading is not the only skill that children uh, need to develop in order to become good communicators or to become uh, proficient uh, users of language. They, they uh, need to learn how to listen, to speak, and write. They also need to learn how to view things because viewing is now considered as one of the skills in communication. So yung dating apat na listening, speaking, reading, writing, ay lima na ngayon. E dinagdag yung viewing. Panunod, viewing. So you see, in terms of language, all of these four areas should be given due attention or proper attention so that there will be a holistic approach in terms of the child's development or linguistic development. So, again, to go back to the main point of our discussion, as teachers, we should understand 
how development occurs, particularly cognitive development, how cognitive development occurs among our learners. Again, I would like to uh, remind you, my dear students, we are talking about cognitive development, huh? meaning how their minds develop, the way they process information. Cognitive or con uh, cognition, I repeat, is all about thinking. Cognition means thinking. So cognitive development pertains or refers to the development of the learner in terms of his ability to think and to process information and to learn from what he processes. Okay, so uh, to repeat, that will be the focus of our discussion this uh, time, not today. So let me continue. So I, I, uh, I mentioned this uh, in passing in the previous slide, no? Our uh, learning, uh, the, the, way, the, the way we uh, develop cognitively, uh, even emotionally and physically, yung ating pag-develop ng ating personality, um, um, are affected by different factors. Nandito yung kanyang mga... Example, schooling, home, culture, and community factors. Sabi nga natin kanina, uh, we develop differently. No? Uh, because we come from different uh, backgrounds. We, we have gone through different, uh, different uh, experience experiences experiences in life experiences in life okay kakabulbulon na umpisa pa lang um how we process things how we interpret our life experiences including how we learn are affected influenced determined by uh, by these factors prior schooling, our home, the kind of home we grow up in, uh, profoundly affects our learning. The culture, the cultural background from which we come. Yung ating kultura, malaki ang epekto niyan sa ating pagkakatuto. As you can see in the um, succeeding topics, no? we will have a specific topic regarding the effect or influence of culture to our learning and community factors. Imagine that, if in the community from which we come, uh, affects our, learner, uh, our learning. So, sabi nga natin, uh, because we are social organisms, we, uh, we, we exist in a society and we do not develop in isolation as persons. We are influenced by all our experiences. We are, we are influenced, meaning our development, no? Uh, is uh, influenced or affected by everything and by everybody around us. It is important for parents to be involved. It is important for parents to be engaged in the schooling of their children and to establish an open communication line between them, between the parents and their children. These uh, practices will help uh, children develop um, better, develop properly. Lalo ngayon, we are under the new normal era. <laughs> parents have, the role of the parents uh, um, is uh, very, 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 very important. It has been very important before, but even more so uh, nowadays. Because 
their children stay at home and it's the parents who are there the, 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 the teachers uh, teach their, their pupils through modules uh, through online uh, instruction and uh, in, in, in many instances these methodologies uh, cannot have the same effect or results as direct instruction uh, inside the classroom the, the, the teachers are not there to give immediate feedback who is there the parents the, the, the teachers are not there to give immediate follow up immediate reinforcement who is there the parents so as I have said uh, the, the role of the parents are very very important vital crucial even more so today that we, we are living we are learning under mm, challenging circumstances so to drive home the point again here children develop differently no? they have different interests they have different mm, mm, needs they have different ways of processing things they have different ways of learning they differ in, in, in almost everything. They differ in a lot of ways. Because they come from different uh, cultural and social backgrounds. They have different prior schooling experiences. They come from different family backgrounds. Some families are supportive, some are not. Some are um, caring and supportive, some are not so much. Uh, so. Children, when they come to school, uh, demonstrate or manifest or show different kinds of behavior, different kinds of learning, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, coping strategies, things like those. So, magkaiba-iba talaga mga bata. Kasi nga, iba-iba ang kanilang mga experiences at iba-iba ang kanilang pinanggalingan. Teachers should understand all of these things no? so they can easily deal with their children, with their learners. They can easily adjust to them. And, and handle classroom problems in a way that uh, uh, children will will uh, um, will enjoy schooling, will enjoy uh, attending classes under this particular teacher. Kasi marunong siya maghandle ng mga bata, so things are like those. That's the whole point here. So as uh, this actually this slide summarizes the, the, the idea that I really want to, to drive home. Awareness and understanding of the developmental differences among children with and without emotional, physical, or intellectual disabilities can facilitate the creation of optimal learning contexts. Contexts. So going back to our question at the beginning of our discussion. Why is it important for teachers to understand the cognitive development process? Why should be aware? Why should we understand differences, developmental differences among children, among our pupils, among our learners? Why? It is because our awareness and understanding of those things will enable us to create, to provide them with optimal, maybe it's been optimal, it gives the best results, optimal learning contexts, learning experiences, learning activities. Kasi ibabagay natin sa kanilang developmental stage who will be able to tailor the, the, the learning experiences we intend to provide them, tailor these things to their needs, their abilities, their interests, based or according to their developmental stage. Iba ang interests ng estudyanting nasa high school na kaysa yung batang nasa elementary grade 3. These very young learners, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, process information differently from those who are in grade 5 and grade 6. Lalong iba sa high school, 
lalong iba sa kolehiyo. Why? Because they are already in different developmental stages. And so therefore, they think and they process information differently depending on their cognitive abilities. See? If we do not understand these things, it would, be, it would be very difficult for us teachers and for you, future teachers, my dear students, to design instructional activities, learning experiences that will be perfectly suited to the, prefer to, to the preferences, to the needs, to the interests of, of our learners, of your learners. So, dapat talaga naiintindihan natin yung ating mga sadyante. How they think, how they process information, how they approach certain, uh, certain things. This topic, developmental dimensions of learning, will help us do that. This topic will help us become aware of the different stages of cognitive development. This topic will help us understand why children behave in a certain way and other children behave in another way. See? Uh, that's, that's how uh, I would like us to approach this topic. No? Uh, to, to, for us to realize first its importance, its value, particularly in the areas or fields of teaching and learning. Mahalaga po para sa ating mga guru na maunawaan natin kung paanong mag-isip at kung paanong mag-behave ang mga bata. How they process information, how they process experiences, how they reason, how they think. Yun po yung tinatawag na nating cognitive development. Yeah. How they process information, yung mga ganun. Basta tungkol sa kanilang pag-iisip. So, Okay, let's proceed now. How children think and learn. Paano ba mag-isip ang mga bata? How do they process information and how do they learn from what they process? This uh, part of our lesson uh, will tell us how. Most of us are fond of children, no? Pag mayroong mga bata, tuwang-tuwa tayo. Ang cute ng batang nga-re. Halika ining, halika utoy. Karagahin kita. Wow, ang bigat. You see, we, we, we love children. They, they are a bundle of joy. They are a bundle of ideas and thoughts. Okay, let us see how they think. Well, because they are still children, expectedly, they think they process information in different, in a different way from adults. Siyempre, dahil bata siya, tayo ay adults. Siyempre, magkaiba tayo ng pag-iisip or paraan ng pag-iisip. We cannot compare, alimbawa, in terms of maturity, in terms of ability to, to process information or to draw, excuse me, to draw conclusions from from, say, a piece of news. Okay. Eh, kasi bata ngayon eh. So, hmm, naturally, children uh, do not yet have the kind of understanding that uh, most adults uh, have or show. Uh, oftentimes, we are also amazed at how fast children develop. Bang rako inak anak ko nakade. O last year kali ay uh, buko pa chat ako. Bantulin ko no magrako no. That's physical. But even in the cognitive aspect, we will still be amazed at how they develop. Mabilis silang mag-develop cognitively. Uh, in the early grades, they can hardly read the printed word. Grade 1 lalo. Ka la bao. 
kalabaw. Makrugay. That's in grade 1. After just a couple of years, children can become proficient readers, even writing uh, writers. No? By the end of the sixth grade, paglampas or paggraduate ng elementary, magagaling na sa pagbabasa, magagaling na sa pagsusulat. Whereas in the just a few years uh, uh, prior to that, they can not even recognize uh, simple words. So the, the, their development is really amazing. Mabilis talaga sila mag-develop, no? Physically, emotionally, intellectually. Uh, they really are a bundle of ideas and thoughts. Sometimes you are surprised at what children say. Kaling ano kuno ay pay magoyang ay magbisaya, oh. See? They, 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 there are instances when we are surprised, when we are amazed at how they, at how good they are at... Mm, uh, processing information. Magagaling, mabibilis mag-develop. Meron mga batang ganyan. Maraming batang ganyan. Okay. So, this one is, uh, the picture is Jean Piaget. Yung bang artiko na magbisay, magbasa si Sir. Buko kayo na ako no, Sir Jean Piaget. Si... <laughs> Siya po kasi daw ay friends. Alam niyo naman ang mga friends. Masyadong sosyalin mag-pronounce. So, tayo-tayo lang naman. <laughs> I-pronounce. Let us pronounce his uh, name uh, the friend's way. Let us give his name uh, the friend's uh, pronunciation. So, Jean Piaget. O, oh, di ba? <laughs> Kesa Jean Piaget. So, malasala pa, malaging pa, mga naging pala, egit pa gano'n. Jean, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Jean Piaget, you know, he gave us these four stages of cognitive development. Yeah. So, of course, so we will need to discuss all of these uh, four stages of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. Namely, oh, sorry, sorry. Namely, uh, ba tayo na itong mag-move itong aking, ah, oh, sige, never mind. Ah, agoy. Ayan. Sensory motors. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back. Di talaga may wasan itong mga ganitong glitches. Class 9, I'm sorry about that. Uh, my, my, my water, uh, my water, my power point slide would no longer move. Ayan na yata yung sumunod sa akin ng kulokoy na ito eh. Ilampos ka sa siminto yung sagala. <laughs> okay, four stages of cognitive development according to um, Jean Piaget. Agar ka kuganda ka pronunciation, hindi ghiwas ka na yun. pre-operational stage. The third one is concrete operational stage. And then we have formal operational stage. Yeah. These are the four stages of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. Sensory motor stage, operational pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage, and formal operational stage. Okay, let's talk about this one by one. Let's start with the sensory motor stage. Senso, sensory, senses, motor, movement, body coordination, sensory motor, use of Senses to explore the world. And usually, this covers the time, the moment the child is born to about or approximately age two. Yeah. 
Yan ang sensory motor stage in terms of age or age bracket. Nag-uumpisa siya sa pagkapanganak until the child re uh, reaches the age of two. Hanggang maging, la, uh, hanggang maging dalawang taong gulang siya. And as the term again implies, sensory motor, he tries to make sense of the world. He tries to understand his immediate environment through the use of his senses. He uh, uses his senses, his sense of sight, his sense of hearing, his sense of touch, his sense of smell, and his sense of taste. And because he is, because he is still an, an infant, his knowledge, his understanding of the world is limited to, limited to uh, what he sees, what he hears, what he feels, or what he touches, what he smells, and what he tastes. Meaning, he cannot yet conceptualize. Meaning, he cannot picture in his mind. He cannot form an idea. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng conceptualize class, no? In his mind, things that he cannot perceive through his senses. And because he is an infant, his behaviors, his actions are limited to simple motor responses. Simple motor responses. The simplest translation is, or interpretation is, very simple movements. Very simple uh, gestures. Very simple actions. As a response as a reaction to outside or in, even internal stimuli. Hanggang doon lang ang kaya niyang gawin na pag-unawa sa mundo, yung kanyang nakikita, yung kanyang naririnig, yung kanyang nararamdaman sa pamamagitan ng kanyang balat or skin, yung kanyang naamoy, yung kanyang natitikman or nalalasahan through his mouth or tongue. Sensory motor stage from birth to about or approximately age 2. Furthermore, his behaviors are limited to simple motor responses caused by sensory stimuli, or already mentioned, no? And because they are newborns, <laughs> They are infants. They use or utilize skills and abilities they were born with. Such as looking, sucking, or grasping. These are um, innate skills. These are, what do you call this? Um, they automatically have these skills. They do not have to learn this. They do not need to learn how to look, how to suck, or how to grasp. Nature has equipped them with these survival skills so that, you know, so that they can survive. They can live. Now, imagine a child who needs to learn how to suck at birth. Kailangan mo pang turuan na magsak o paano siyang dedede. How will he, 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 he feed? Uh, how, how, will, how, will we, how will he survive if, had, he, if, if he is not born with that skill? He does not know how to grasp even his uh, battle. Mahirapan siya. So nature has provided him, us, human beings, at birth, with innate skills. At sa umpisa, yun lang ang alam niyang gawin. Di ba kung sila lang eh, what do we expect? Okay, takat bagong anak na Miami mag-computer. So, siyempre, ang alam niya muna, 
how to look, how to suck, how to grasp, how to kick, <laughs> yun, how to cry, oh, pagutong, iyak, nagagat ng langgam, iyak, bang, nung anak na kuno ko na yung bang ayaw magtibaw, ano pang gusto niyang, gusto mong gawin niya, magbisaya nga nito, mapakrayagan rin ka, see, bagong silang, nakipag-usap sa'yo, salita na, so you see, they, ah, uh, what the they have these survival skills, no? innate survival skills given to them by nature so that they would live, they would survive. Okay. Simple motor responses, simple movements, uh, simple gestures, simple actions. That's all they know. Kasi nga, ay mga bagong sila. I, I mean, they are infants, no? Remember, uh, the sensory motor states last from birth to two years old. So, hindi, hindi naman ang ibig sabihin hanggang mag two years old. Oh, uh, mag two years old ay puro sucking, looking, grasping, crying, kicking. These are the early stages, the initial stages, no? These are in the early stages. Siyempre, habang lumalaki yung bata, as months and, uh, yeah, months uh, pass, he would develop other skills, more complex skills, which would enable him to do uh, or perform more complex um, responses, motor responses, more complex uh, movements, more complex uh, gestures or actions. Uh, natural yun. That's the natural process, no? Okay. Uh, they also resort to throwing toys. This is very common among children, no? They are fond of throwing toys to explore them. Now, they are not angry, but they, they just want to know what will happen. <laughs> if they throw uh, a toy into the floor, into the wall, into the face of <laughs> whoever is uh, taking care of him. And listening to learn more about the environment, they begin to uh, listen around them. They listen to the words spoken to them. They listen to the sounds they hear around them. Until they become familiar with those things. He becomes familiar with the voice of the brother, the sister, the father. So pag narinig niyo yung boses ng tatay, nagigigil, ituwang-tuwa na siya. So he begins to recognize the voices of the people around him. And he responds to those sounds, to those voices, uh, in a certain way. Pag natatakot siya sa isang tao, boses pa lang, ay, umuyak na siya. No? Wow, wow, kasi natakot siya dun sa boses. Okay. Oh. So, through touching uh, things, no? by holding them, by listening to sounds, by tasting food, by in other words, by showing or by using his uh, senses, especially especially um, uh, seeing, hearing, uh, at saka, hindi pa nga may yata masyado yung smell. Eh. Uh, I just don't know kung hanggang saan ang pangamoy ng bata in, in, in the first few days, in the, in the first few weeks. No? Uh, I just don't know if uh, these uh, senses are already well developed. Kasi yung mata, kung napapansin natin, yung bata ay parang nakapikit ma uh, most of the time. Pagbagong silang, most of the time the child is sleeping, parang medyo kung pa siya, ah, palagi nakapikit. But when uh, he begins to explore his surroundings, his environment, he begins to touch things, he hold objects, and then throw them. Hindi naman lahat ng bata eh, mahilig magtapon. He listens, he tastes, okay. He explores, in other words, class, you know, uh, he, he begins to explore his environment. Uh, he begins to explore his immediate environment uh, using his uh, senses. Kaya sensory motor states. They do not yet have the sense of time and space or place as we do. Siyempre, bata yun, batang maliit eh. For the child in the sensory motor stage, uh, the only time is now. Big sabihin, they do not yet have a sense of yesterday or past time 
and the future. Hindi, lam, hindi nila alam yung mga konsep, konsepto ng past at saka future. The only time they understand is now. Pag umiyak yan, because you know, maybe example, he's hungry. Pag umiyak yan, he wants food right now. Hindi niya maintindihan pa yung mamaya tinitimpla pa anak. <laughs> Or mamaya, mamaya bumili pa si ate sa tindahan. He does not understand that. All he understands is he is hungry. All he knows because his stomach is, uh, is um, telling him that he needs food. Sakit ng katiyan eh. Kaya umiyak. And that is all he understands. He does not understand the concept of mama. Yeah, bumibili pa sa tindahan. Kasi nga maliit siyang bata. So the only thing he understands, he understands in terms of time is now. Ngayon lang. And in terms of place, ito lang na lugar na ito. Ang kanyang napapaproses, napaproses sa kanyang isip. He does not understand where the tindahan is. He does not understand the concept of tindahan. He does not understand the, that his ate would still walk two or three uh, corners or kanto to buy milk. Hindi niya maintindihan. All he understands is he needs milk right now, right here. Yeah. Ganyan sila mag -isip. So aside from touching, aside from uh, grasping, aside from sunking, the child learns motor skills as a scraping. Yeah. This, this, uh, what do you These motor skills come a little bit later. Kasi itong mga ito ay hin hindi ito inborn. Kailangan pa itong matutuhan niya. A walking, uh, wala namang bata na pagkasilang ay naglalakad na kagad, no? He would need to learn uh, how to perform this or do these uh, motor skills or movements. Uh, matututo siyang mag-creep, gumapang, crawl, and walk. Yeah. So the moment that happens, the moment the, la uh, the child learns to creep, crawl, and walk, his environment, his world, kumbaga, expands by leaps and bounds. His world expands Rapidly, he begins to explore other parts of his room, other parts of the house. He now has the senses at this point within. Now within the sensory motor stage, from, from the time na siya ay ipinanganak hanggang mag two years old, his world, his environment, expands by leaps and bounds. Meaning, biglang nag-expand, biglang lumalawak, biglang lumalaki yung kanyang mundo, yung kanyang environment, which he can explore. Kapag lakad-lakad na siya ng konti, so, dati doon lang siya sa kanyang crib. Ngayon, nakakalabas na papunta doon sa mal malapit sa pinto ng kanyang room, and then after a while, he would uh, explore other parts of the house. The child begins to explore his environment with both senses and the ability to get there. He, he has, now he has the ability to uh, go to other parts of the house, expanding or widening or broadening his environment, his world. So, you see, that is how development occurs in a gradual process. No? Uh, and there, 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 there is a specific pattern, there is a definite pattern for, for this thing to develop. No? Now, on the young mga innate skills, so, so not young one creeping, crawling, and walking. Then after a while, uh, speaking will come. Yeah. Okay, let us follow, let us trace the development. So at this point, siya ay nakakapaglakad na. 
Unamuna na kikri pa nagkakrawl, ngayon nakakapaglakad na. Two years old, naglalakad na yan ha. If the child is already two years old and he does not yet walk, kahit uh, hahawak sa mga upuan muna at first, dapat at this time nakakapaglakad na yung mga bata. Karapanay kang anak sa tuyarnak edad. So it is expected that at the age of two, the child is already capable of this motor skills or motor movement ng paglalakad. Alright. According to Piaget, the development of object permanence is one of the most important accomplishments at this stage of development. What is this very important accomplishment or development during the sensory motor stage? This is the development of object permanence within these stages. The child develops the knowledge, the sense that an object or a person continues to exist even if that person or that object is removed from his sight or from her sight, kung baba yung bata. Object permanence is that knowledge, the understanding that a person or object continues to exist somewhere else even if that object or that person is no longer there in front of him for him to see. Naobserbahan nyo ba yan sa mga bata? Baka sabihin nyo, ay natural sir, pag hindi nyo nakikita, siyempre nasa ibang lugar na yan, and nandun pa rin yung object or person. It still exists. Kasi po, kaya merong ganong konsepto, at first, the child does not understand, does not have this knowledge, the child does not have this understanding. Sa bandang unahan, or in the initial um, stages of the sensory motor stage, the child does not have this knowledge or understanding. He thinks that when an object or person is removed from his sight, if he cannot see an object or a person, that object or that person does not exist anymore. So the only things that exist in his world are those that he can see. Diba kanina sabi natin he has no uh, concept of time as having yesterday or past and future. The only thing he understands is the now, the present. In terms of place, the only place he understands is the place he, where he finds himself at present. Yung lugar na kung saan siya at present, yun lang ang lugar para sa kanya sa buong mundo. Wala nang ibang lugar. So if an object is not within sight, hindi niya nakikita sa, sa kanyang batang-batang-batang isip, yung bagay na yun ay hindi na rin nag exist Wala na siya sa mundo. Think of a mother or an adult playing peekaboo with a child. Halimbawa, um, three months, four months, five months. How do we play peekaboo? Diba, we cover our face with our hands and then we remove our hands 
and see our face again. Medyo maginugulat pa nga natin ng konti yung bata. Eh. Sabi natin na, boo! Or, wah! Dito naman ako. And then we cover our face again. The child stops laughing. Tumitigil siya sa pagtawa or paggigil or whatever. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang reaction. Nakukuberan yung mukha mo eh. Akala niya, hindi ka na nag exist sa mundo. You have stopped or ceased to exist. Why? Because he can, along, he can no longer see you. Hindi ka niya makikita eh. Hindi, hindi ka nag exist And then you remove your hands again to show your, to show your face. Kita ka naman niya ngayon. Tawa naman siya ng tawa. Ay, ganyan sabi niya. Bakit si tuwang-tuwa? Kasi, nandyan ka na naman. nag exist ka na naman. Bigla kang nag eh. So, bigla kang nag-exist ulit sa kanyang mundo. <laughs> sa kanyang isip. And then you cover your face again. Nakala niya, wala ka na naman. Hindi ka naman nag-exist. So, wala naman siyang reaksyon. And then we remove our hands. Tuwang-tuwa na naman siya. <laughs> that is how we, we play pick a book. And this is a very good illustration of object uh, the, this is a very good uh, illustration of the absence of this object permanence. Kapag nakakapaglaro ka pa ng peekaboo sa isang bata, wala pa siyang ganitong object permanence. He has not uh, developed the sense of object permanence. So kapag siya ay Uh, ko na, uh, nag, nag, nagka-edad pa ng ilapang mo- months more. Diba, mga one year old na, or, basta around, around that age. Meron na siyang object permanence. Ibig sabihin, even if you cover your face, kahit magtago ka pa sa likod ng pinto, he cannot see you, he knows that you still exist. <laughs> Hindi ka lang niya makita, but you still exist. Ang tawag doon, class I, object permanence. Halimbawa, yung kanyang toy, you put that in front of him. Tuwang-tuwa siya. Then you cover it with, say, a, a, a piece of paper. Hindi na na, hmm, hindi na niya ngayon makita yung toy. Wala na siyang reaction. Akala niya kasi, The toy does not exist anymore. It's no longer there. It's no longer in this world. The, it does not exist anymore. Wala pa siyang object permanence. Later, pag nadagdagan yung kanyang age in months, uh, 19, uh, one year old, one year and one month, one year and two months, yung mga ganyan, alam na niya. Even if you cover his toy with, with a piece of paper, he knows that it's still there. Hindi lang niya makita. Alam niyang si nanay pumunta lang ng labas ng bahay, maybe na malengke, or pumunta sa kapit bahay. But he knows that the mother, his or her mother, still exists. So, hintay niyang pagbalik. Oh, ma- mamayang konti, nandiyan na nga si nanay. Ang tawag doon ay object permanence. This is achieved or this happens within this sensory motor stage of cognitive development. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, ano po yung ibang nang, importanteng nangyayari sa sensory uh, stage of development? Yung speaking no or talking? At the age of two, the child is already capable of uh, communicating a very very simple thoughts no very simple he can he can use very simple expressions very simple uh, sentences yung ibang bata na nakakausap mo na talaga no at the age of two yun ang mga importanteng development sa sensory motor uh, states and then we proceed to the pre-operational stage which lasts from age two to 6 years old. Yan. 
So, mula sa edad na dalawa hanggang anim, or approximately within this age bracket, the pre-operational stage. These are just estimates class ha, itong mga edad na ito. Hindi naman ang ibig sabihin eh, eksaktuhan niya na, pag patak niya ng 2 years old, nasa pre-operational stage na siya. We're talking about skills here, without, we're talking about the development of cognitive skills. Mga estimate lang ito na at the age of 2, usually or generally speaking, children reach the age of uh, pre-operational uh, states. Hindi naman eksakto down to the last day ito na, uy, birthday ni baby bukas. So technically, or strictly speaking, siya ngayon ay wala pang two. <laughs> so, ay wala pa pala sa pre-operational si baby. Bukas pa siya mag, mag two, two years old kasi bukas ang birthday niya. So bukas pa siya mag pre-operational stage. Ngayon ay nasa sensory motor stage pa. Hindi naman po gano'n na exactuhan down to the last day. These are just estimates based on their cognitive development. This can have differences of months. Kaya nga may ibang mga bata, 2 years old na, uh, nahirap na hirap pa rin magsalita. Yung iba matabil na. Di ba sabi natin, children develop at different rates. Children de uh, develop differently. So again, these are just estimates. Pero generally speaking, no, pag 2 years old na hanggang 6 years old, they possess uh, similar characteristics with some um, include the following. The development of language. Kapag 6 years old na hindi pa nagsasalita, something is wrong with the child's um, uh, linguistic development or maybe even cognitive development. Kasi, uh, based from experience, if a child is already 2 or, or uh, 6 years old, from 2 to 6, children are already uh, good speak, uh, good, they, they, they speak uh, fluently. No? Uh, so language development is one of the most important developments in this stage. One of the hallmarks, meaning it's, it's one of the, it's one of the um, things that distinguish uh, the pre-operational stage from other stages. Sa sensory motor stage, meron ang mga bata nagsasalita, no? But not as um, proficient, uh, not as fluent as children in the pre-operational stage. Yung may edad na dalawa hanggang anin. So that's one. Language, language development. Children in these states do not yet understand concrete logic. Hindi pa sila masyadong magaling sa reasoning. Hindi pa masyadong magaling sa logic. Two years old, three years old, four years old, five, six years old, you cannot expect a very high level of reasoning from, this, from children this young. Yung mga ganito kababata na mga learners, mga bata, we cannot expect a very high or levels of reasoning from them. Mga bata eh. They cannot mentally manipulate information. They are unable to take the point of view of other people. This inability to say things, to view things based from the perspective of another person is called egocentrism. Egocentrism. Ego means self, no? Centrism. No. Oh. Similar to the word center. He centers on what he thinks. He focuses on what he thinks. What he feels. What he feels. Egocentric. Children are egocentric. Not because of any bad values, not because of any bad intention. It's just the way children are. Because of the developmental stage they are in. Ganon po talaga ang mga bata. No? They are egocentric. 
and then we proceed. They do not yet have the ability to understand that other people can have different opinions, different thoughts, different feelings from their own. Ibig sabihin, uh, kapag gusto ng isang bata ang isang halimbawa food, a child likes this particular food, he would expect other people in the community, at least in the family, no? to also like this kind of food. Ganon nyo? Kasi nga, he does not yet have that understanding can, that other people can have different preferences in food. What he thinks is that because he likes uh, uh, fried eggs, everybody in the family also likes fried eggs. So his evaluation, his judgment of other people is based on what he himself or herself thinks and or feels. Kung ano yung iniisip niya, kung ano yung nararamdaman niya, iniisip niyang ganun din ang iniisip at nararamdaman ng ibang tao sa paligid niya. That is what we call egocentrism. Have you ever observed uh, children conversing? Halimbawa, uh, a group of, say, three uh, children uh, talking about anything. Pag nag-usap ang mga bata, they jump from one topic to another. And there is no logical sequence. There is no... Oh, sorry, sorry. There is no coherent, there is no logical order of, of uh, things they say. Meaning, a child, alimbawa, tatlo nga sila, no? The first child would say something. The second child, when he gets the opportunity to speak, would answer or say something that is totally unrelated to what was said by the first child. And then the third child, when uh, his turn to speak comes, when he gets the opportunity, would say something that is again totally unrelated to what the second child said and to what the first child said. So, titigil siya sa pagsasalita. Balik tayo sa first child. He would again say something that is totally unrelated to what the third and the second child first, but a continuation or related to what the first child, the one is speaking now, said before. So, magkakaugnay yung sinasabi ng isang bat ng first child sa sinasabi niya ng first child. Yung una niyang sinabi at yung pangalawang sinabi niya ay magkaugnay. Yung sinabi ng pangalawang bata at yung pangalawang sinabi ng pangalawang bata ay magkakaugnay din. But if you listen to them, it does not form a single coherent, unified story. You will have three stories, but when you look at them talk, when you look at them converse with one another, it would appear to the observer that they are talking to one another. Mukha silang nagkukwentuhan. Para silang nag-uusap talaga kung titingnan mo sa malayo. But if you go near them and listen to what they are saying, you will find out that what they are saying are totally unrelated to what the others are saying. Hindi magkakaugnay-ugnay ang sinasabi ng bawat salita, pero magkakaugnay-ugnay ang sinasabi niya, ang kinukwento niya 
sa sarili niya. It just appears that he is talking to the other two children, but in, effect, in, in reality, he is talking to himself. He's talking about his own thoughts. He's, so, he's just talking about his own emotions. Limbawa, oh, first time, oh, dumating, dumating ang tatay ko galing, galing Manila. Maraming dalang pasalubong sa amin. Sumagot yung dalawang bata. Ay, yung pangalawang bata. O nga, ang sarap ng fried eggs, yun ang, yun ang ko namin, yun ang almusal namin kanina. At saka maganda ang kulay ng bago naming kuting ng anak yung amin pusa. Ah, sabi naman ng pangatlong bata. Ah, marami akong ginawang drawing, magaling akong mag-drawing. Nilagyan ko ng maraming color. May blue, may yellow. Tapos titigil sa pagsasalita. Back to the first child. Maraming dalang chocolate sa tatay galing sa Maynila. Binigyan niya ako ni ate. At saka si kuya. Back to the pangalawang bata. Oh. Nilagyan ni nanay ng ampalaya yung, yung itlog. Hindi ako kumain pa. It. Gusto ko puro itlog lang. Back to the third child. Ah, magdo-drawing ako ng eroplano. Gusto ko mag-drawing ng eroplano eh. So if <laughs> if you look at them from a distance, from a distance, I mean, I mean, no. If you look at them from a distance, it would appear that they are talking to each other. Para talaga silang nagkukwentuhan. But uh, if you go near them and listen to what they are saying, this is what you will see. You will hear totally unrelated uh, stories. Stories that don't that that don't proceed in the type of logical sequence an adult would expect. Yeah. Ah. Uh, children at this stage understand that words are symbols for real objects. Ah. Uh, Uh, by the way, yung sinasabi ko, example kanin ng mga bata na nagkukwentuhan without any logical sequence, no? It, it, it happens in the first, in the, in the first uh, part of the pre, uh, of pre-operational stage. Hindi naman hanggang mag-6 years old sila, ganun sila mag-usap. Sabi nga natin, marami namang development na, nangy- na nangyayari. Within its um, developmental stage, no? Tulad kanina sa sensory motor, yung object permanence, it happens in the later part. Yung fluent, uh, the ability to speak flu- uh, fluently, nasa later part then. So, ganun din dito sa uh, pre-operational stage. Uh, sa bandang una, children do not have this ability to converse or talk to one another in a logical sequence. Later, they will have that skill, no? Still within the pre-operational stage. Kasi, halimbawa, mga 6 years old na, marunong na magkwentuhan yan na nagkakatugma na yung kanilang mga sinasabi. So, in addition to that, children at this stage understand that words are symbols for real objects. People, animals, and uh, they can pretend that something is uh, uh, something else. No? They can pretend that a used box is a car. <laughs> Checkers are cookies. They can uh, pretend that a broom is a horse. Yeah. Uh, they are uh, very good at playing make believe. Yeah. So, in the sensory motor states, they do not have understanding of time as in past, future. Ngayon, medyo marunong na sila. They already understand that there were events that happened in the past. There are events happening at present. And events will still happen in the future. Yeah. But they do not have yet an adult's understanding of time concepts or cause and effect. Uh, time concepts, yung, yung ating pagkakaunawa sa, sa oras or sa panahon. 
Halimbawa, that, that time can divide it into, into eras or epochs. Yeah. Wow, wala pa silang concept ng ganyan. Basta sa kanila, past lang, present, future. Yeah. Um, it, uh, they also find it difficult to understand the concept of cause and effect. Uh, bakit nangyayari itong ganitong bagay? Ano ba ang cause? Ano ba ang dahilan? Bakit ganito? Uh, all they say is the effect. What, meaning, all they say is what happens, what is happening right in front of them right now. Hindi na nila muna hinahanap kung ano ang, ano ang cause. Basta ganito ang nangyayari. Okay, so we are still in the uh, pre-operational stage, no? Okay. They do not understand things in terms of more than one dimension or relationship. Remember, now we're talking about the pre-operational pre stage. Ano po ulit ang edad? Generally, from two years old to six years old. They do not understand complex or uh, more than one dimension or relationship. Hindi pa nila alam yung komplikadong or mahirap na pagkakaugnay-ugnay or relasyon ng mga bagay-bagay. Uh -uh. <laughs> Grandma is my mommy. Nahirapan silang intindihin yun sa kanilang, sa kanilang uh, uh, nanay. Kasi ang pagkakaintindi nila, si grandma, si lola, ay lola niya. So, siguro lola din siya ng mami niya. Hindi yeah. <clears throat> niya alam ay, iba namang relationship yun, hindi, hindi lola. Siya at yung lola ang maglola. So, ang tingin niya sa mami niya at sa lola niya maglola din. They do not yet know how to process complex relationships. Kaya sabi ng bata, Hindi ako nakatira sa Pilipinas. Dito ang tirahan namin sa Manila eh. See? Pero later, of course, these understandings will come to him. Ah, it will come. Pero sa pre-operational stage, lalo sa bandang una, in the early part, hindi mo na nila ito naiintindihan ito mga ganitong bagay. <coughs> So as they grow or develop further, these children in the pre-operational states become better, more adept at using symbols. Mas lalo silang gumagaling in using sim uh, symbols. <clears throat> what are these uh, symbols? Things that they use to represent something else. There, sabi nga natin kanina, they become increasingly good at playing and pretending. Oh, ito. Sabi ng isang bata, Hiya, tigidig, tigidig, hiya. Ano ginagamit niya? Broom. Walis. At saka role playing. Uy, laro tayo ng bahay-bahayan, ha? Ako ang tatay, ikaw nanay. O, oh, sige. Tapos, sino sa atin ang hindi nakaranas maglaro ng bahay-bahayan? Siguro lahat nakaranas, no? Everybody experienced, everybody, everybody has experienced how to play house. Sige, akong tatay ha, ikaw nanay. Magluluto tayo ng ating hapunan. Uh, yung ibang bata, maswerte, binilha ni mami ng mga gamit. Uh, toy pot, toy kettle, uh, toy everything. Eh, yung ibang mga bata, tulad namin noon, na mga... Ginagamit namin, makatansan, kung anong nakikita sa backyard. No? But, the, we get the same enjoyment. Masaya naman kami. Yung kapagluto naman ng pagkain, yun pala, dahon lang na pinunit-punit. Kunyari, gulay na. Or, taybo, binutang sa tunga, kanin. Kahoy na pintol-putol, may ulam na. Kasi sa isip ng mga bata, pare-pareho yun eh. See, they, they uh, are now able to use uh, symbols very well. And they are very good at pretending. 
O kunyari, ako doktor na, ikaw pasyente, halika dito. O, oh, itong, itong, ito, itong stethoscope, yun pala, lubid lang, tinali lang sa kanyang lig. Kunyari, stethoscope na. O sa iyo si, o hingam, hingam. Abo, abo, abo. Yan mo rin, laliman mo. Abo, after mga seven or eight repetitions, sabi ng isang bata, Dok, anong sakit ko? Ah, ikaw ay may ubo. <laughs> pinaubo ng pinaubo. Tao. Yan ang sakit mo, ubo. That is how they play, no? They can't pretend. Yung iba namang mga bata, kasi medyo marami sila. Ako, teacher, kayo, pupil, sa Palo kayo, pag maingay kayo. Yes, ma'am. Very, very... They really, they really enjoy this kind of games, no? And they can transport themselves into this kind of uh, reality in their minds. Kung titingnan mo sila, para talagang si nanay, parang si tatay, para talagang doktor, parang pasyente, parang teachers, parang, they, parang mga pupils, how they behave, how they speak. They are very good at pretending. They are very good at playing make-believe. No? That's one of the characteristics of children in the pre-operational stage. Yeah, so, tandaan po, na, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Tandaan po natin yung mga developments, ha? Tandaan natin yung mga developments. Oh. They, are very, they become very good at using symbols. Uh, they become better. And, uh, and uh, they can now use language very well. Uh, six years old, talagang matatas na yung magsalita, no? Compared with previous, uh, the, the previous um, stage of Cognitive development, which is sensory. Sa una nga yan, bubulul-bulul pa eh. Gusto ko minum, sabihin, mamam. No, gusto ko kumain, ah, nunun. Hmm. Alright. So let us proceed. So the point here is, children at, uh, in the pre-operational stage are very good at role-playing. They are very good at pretending they are very good at playing make-believe. Kaya nga, ang theme song nila yung kay Marcos Eason ba yun? It's just to make believe. Kung di ko pause, ay kakantahan ko kayo, kaya lang pause. Pause pa ako. Ito na, pag magaling na ako. Pero magbabayad. <laughs> Bayad kayo. Okay. Piaget proposed that three characteristics of pre-operational thought Limit children's thinking. Mayroon daw tatlong factors, tatlong characteristics that limit how children think. The first is, is the child's ability to understand reversibility. Yung pagbabaliktad, pag-reverse ng isang proseso, ng, ng, ng isang kind of relationship, ng, ng pagkakaugnay ng mga bagay. That logical operations can be changed back to the original state and there are logical steps involved in an operation. Let us look at this. Okay. The second is... Ah, uh, Let us talk about the first one first. Yung reversibility, yung... Uh, seeing seeing uh, or understanding... The, the, the reverse of a process or a relationship. Hmm. Anong magandang example dito? The reverse of uh, halimbawa, yung uh, fundamental operation. Yung pag-reverse ng, ng subtraction. So you see, to check uh, subtraction, uh, you reverse the process and make use of addition. Hmm. Alimbawa, four, uh, ano, uh, medyo lakihan natin, seven. Seven minus three uh, equals four. Ayan. So that is uh, subtraction, no? Kung gusto nilang i-check yung kanilang answer, all they have to do is to reverse the process. So from subtraction, they shift to addition. I-add nila yung answer, 4, doon sa 3, and they would get, get 7 
which is part of the original question. So, ni reverse nila yung process. No? The, the, the process was reversed to check the, the answer. They do not have that kind of... Ano? Kung lang siguro yun, flag ceremony. Hindi na ako atin, nag-record ako ng lecture. A flag ceremony, flag retreat pala, hapon na ito. Agoy na. Sorry, sorry about that. Meron pumasok dito sa aking classroom saying something to me. Let me go back to that. So, as I was saying just a while ago, the, um, what do you call this? The ability to reverse a process, to reverse a procedure, uh, children do not, uh, children in the uh, pre-operational uh, stage um, do not yet have that ability. So, yun yun. They do not have the ability to reverse a procedure or a process. Yun ang ibig sabihin dito na, the child's inability to understand reversibility. That is one of the things that limit their thinking. Another one is the second one uh, is the tendency to focus on ends rather than means. Ends in this sentence refers to what they want to get or achieve. End. The objective end. You know, man means the way of getting that objective. Alam mo, gusto nila ng pagkain. Nakita sa tindahan. All they want to, all they want is to have that alam mo, candy. All they want is the candy. Gusto nilang makakuha ng candy. They do not um, focus on the means kung paano kukunin yung candy. Nabibilhin pa. So hindi siya mag-worry kung may pera si nanay, kung maganda para sa kanya yung candy kasi bungi na yung kanyang ngipin. Uh, kung paano makukuha yung candy, basta ang gusto niya, his focus, his concentration is on the candy that he wants. Yon. Tendency to focus on the ends rather than means. Liba, gusto ng prutas, aketin sa taas ng puno. Ipapaketin sa kuya niya, sa tatay niya. Without regard to the height of a tree. Hindi niya na iisip yun. Hindi na niya nag... Hindi siya nag-worry about it. He does not focus on the height of a tree, the difficulty the father or the the the, the brother will go through to get the fruit. Uh, that it's already night time. Basta gusto niya, ang focus niya, ang nasa isip niya is nothing else but the fruit. Gusto niya ng prutas and that's all he knows. Yun ang ibig sabihin dito, class. Tendency to focus on ends, yung objective, yung gusto niya yung mangyari or makuha, rather than means. Wala siyang focus dun sa paraan ng pagkuha at kung anong madadaanan mo to get that. Basta ang focus niya doon sa bagay na gusto niya. Yan ang ibig sabihin dito. The third characteristic is centration or focusing on only one dimension of a problem. Because of their uh, very young age, they are not yet capable of looking at a problem from multiple perspectives. Basta yun ang kanilang nakita lang na problema and they focus on that. Gustong maabot yung gustong maabot yung garapon na may candy. Hindi niya maabot because he is very small. Doon na lang siya nakafocus, iiyak, maglulupasay kasi hindi niya maabot. Hindi siya tumingin, he did not look around him to look for objects he can use, he can step on. To reach the battle of candy. Or whatever it is that he wants to reach or get. Nakafocus lang siya sa isang dimension. 
mayroong pagkain, mayroong candy doon sa grapon na kalagay sa istante, hindi niya maabot. That is the dimension or aspect of the problem that he sees. So, yun yung tatlong bagay. No? These are the three uh, things that limit children's thinking. Yeah. Sinasabi natin na limitado mag-isip naman itong mga batang ito because of these things. And naturally, dahil nga mga bata pa, they are really limited in terms of cognitive processing. Kaya nga natin pinag-aaralan itong mga ganito so that we will understand our learners. Na, nasa hindi tayo sa grade 1, 6 years old. What do we expect? Are we going to expect them to process things like adults do? Of course not. Because alam natin, 6 years old yan. So we already know how 6 year old children think. How they process information. So we will not expect too much from them. We will expect things that are uh, appropriate for these particular developmental states. Yeah. Okay, so let us proceed. So, pang tatlo na tayo. What pang tatlo na tayo, sir? What's the first one? The first one is sensory motor stage. The second is pre-operational stage. So, here we have concrete operational stage. Okay, what happens here? Ano bang nangyayari dito? Well, first off, no? Ah... Uh, this begins around age 7 and continues until approximately age 11. So, pagkatapos ng uh, pre-operational stage, remember, the pre-operational stage lasts up to 6 years old, approximately. Huh? So, after that, concrete operational stage follows hanggang naman ito, 11 years old. From 7 to 11 years old. So let's go back to the question. Paano ba bang isip? Paano ba mag-isip ang mga bata sa ganitong edad? How do children at this particular uh, developmental stage think? Okay. During this time, children gain a better understanding of math. Sorry again, sorry. Masabi eh. During this time... <laughs> Children gain a better understanding of mental operations. Medyo mature-mature na ng konti ang mga bata dito. So they are now able to engage in or process more, more complex uh, mental uh, problems and perform more complex mental operations than they were, than they were capable of doing previously. Siyempre, nag-edad ng konti. And so, therefore, their cognitive abilities also uh, improved or developed accordingly. Yeah. Okay. They begin to think logically about concrete events. Yung mga konkretong pangyayari. Anong konkreto, sir? Nag-humanit? Siminto uh, na kapader? Hindi po. Yung mga concrete, concrete events. Yung mga pangyayaring talagang nangyayari. Things that occur or happen in reality. Hindi yung imagined lang, hindi hypothetical. Yeah. But have difficulty understanding abstract or hypothetical concepts. Children at this uh, age can process or think logically about concrete events. Yung talagang nakikita nilang nangyayari around them. May dumadang mga jeep, concrete events yan. Ma, may mga nabibili sila, sila sa tindahan. Yan. Nagmahal yung kanilang paboritong pagkain from 10 pesos to 12 pesos. These are concrete events. Because they happen, they occur in reality. Nagaganap sa realidad. Concrete events. Compare that with Abstract or hypothetical concepts? Abstract or hypothetical? Hypothetical concepts. Halimbawa ganito. Ano ang mangyayari sa palagay nyo kung oh, magpalit tayo ng 
form of government. Hypothetical yun. Kasi hindi nila nakikita in reality yung shift into another form of government. They are not yet capable of processing hypothetical concepts or hypothetical situations. Yung gagawa-gawa ka lang ng isang situation tapos ipapaprocess sa kanila mentally or cognitively, di ka na do that. Kailangan nilang makitang nangyayari muna talaga in reality or in actuality. Yung isang bagay, before they can logic, before they can think logically about these things. Yan ang isang karakteristik ng concrete operational stage or children in the concrete operational stage. They find it difficult in understanding abstract or hypothetical concepts, but they can think logically about concrete events, meaning those events, those things that happen in actuality, happen in reality, and they can see those things happen. They can process, they can think logically about those things, but they cannot think logically about hypothetical concepts, meaning imaginary events, meaning events that are made up. Hindi nila kayang i-process yun kasi hindi nila nakikita ang nangyayari in reality. Hindi nila nakikita ang nangyayari in actuality. Yun yun. Remember ha, age 7 until around 11. Concrete operational uh, states. Okay? Uh, at this particular stage, they become adept at categorization of objects and ideas. They are now able to group together objects and ideas that possess similar characteristics. Characteristics. They are now able to categorize objects and ideas. So they already know the concept of sasakyan. Hmm. Alam nila na ng isang motor ay sasakyan. Alam nila na ang kotse ay sasakyan. Bisikleta ay sasakyan. Jeep ay sasakyan. See? Sasakyan, the word sasakyan is a category. It is a group. It is a class. At ang member ng class na yan, ang member ng group na yan, ang members ng category na yan ay different kinds of objects. Different kinds of things. Jeep, kotse, motor, bisikleta, etc., etc. They all fall under the category of sasakyan. Vehicles. They already know how to do that. No? Um... Ideas. Alam nila na uh, they, they can already understand the concept of categorizing ideas. Halimbawa tayo, the idea of size. Alam nila na the, the word size, the concept of size can come in, in, in many forms. Yung malaki size yon, Yung medium lang size din. Yung maliit or small size din. They are all sizes. So they already know this. So yung category doon ay Size. Yung group ay size. Yan. Yung class ay size. Yung maliit, malaki, medium, katamtaman lang. These are the members of the set. These are the, the, the members of the category or the group. They, they can already uh, think about these things. No? They can cognitively process things like this. They can categorize objects and ideas. Then we continue. Children are able to perform tasks... Uh, that they were unable to do and master in the preceding stage. Yung ating, uh, yung ating uh, preceding stage, yung mga sinundang stages. Uh, sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, marami silang mga bagay na hindi kayang gawin doon. No? There are a lot of things that they could not do in those uh, stages. Now they can do these things such as conservation, classification. Di ba yung pag-classify, nanonal natin, no? kakadidiscuss lang natin. Classification is similar to categorization. When we categorize this, we classify. And part-whole rela relations. Part-whole relations. They are now able to understand 
that something is a part of something. Okay. Um. Ano yung conservation? When we speak of cons uh, conservation, this, uh, this uh, is the understanding that a thing can exist in another form, but it's, it's still the same thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, you get a, you get a, a glass, a tall glass, and then you get a second glass, also a tall glass. You put liquid in both glasses. The liquids are of equal height. Antay, parehong pareho. So, sa isip ng bata, the conclusion is, uh, the uh, two liquids, halimbawa ay two big or soft drinks, are of equal volume. Magkasing dami, magkasing laki. Kasi pareho sila ng height dun sa dalawang baso na magkapareho ng shape at magkapareho ng taas. Ngayon, get, get a container that is not as tall as the first, yung second glass, palitan mo ng another container, another kind of glass, which is not as tall as it is, but wider. Hindi siya kasing taas ng pangalawang baso, pero mas malapad. And then transfer the liquid, the, 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 the soft drinks, the soft drink into it. Pagkatapos ay pagtabihin mo ngayon yung dalawang baso. Yung isang baso na mataas Yung, yung, yung number one na baso kanina, no? di ba? Hirap itong walang drawing kasi. Dalawang baso, parehong tall glasses, magkapanta yung soft drink. Yung pangalawang baso, inilipat mo yung kanyang contents into another glass na mas mababa pero mas malapad. Nung inilipat mo yung soft drinks, ano mangyari doon? Pag pinagtabi mo yung dalawang baso, at uh, tinanong mo yung bata, alin dyan, alin dyan ang mas marami? Remember, yung pangalawang uh, soft drink, nilipat mo do na doon sa mas mababa na baso, pero mas malawa, mas malapad. Ang nangyari doon sa soft drink, siyempre, mas mababa na siya kasi naikalat siya doon sa malapad na baso. So, just please imagine two, two uh, glasses. One is tall, one is short, but wider. Siyempre, yung soft drinks doon, mas mababa. Pero ang sasabihin ng bata, ganito, uh, angkol or kuya or lolo. Mas marami, mas, ma mas marami itong nasa isang baso. Kasi mas matangkad siya. A child who answers that way does not have or does not understand conservation. Sa mga previous stages, sa, sa pre-operational, Ganon ang mga bata, lalo na sa unang part ng pre-operational stage. Dito, sa concrete operational stage, children already have this sense and understanding of conservation. They already know, they already understand that it is still exactly the same amount or volume of liquid. The amount of Liquid, the volume of that liquid was conserved, meaning it does not change. The child has now the ability to understand that it simply changed shape because the container in which it is placed changed. See? Ang tawag dyan ay, ang tawag dyan ay understanding of conservation. You know, man, classification, and discuss natin ito, no? Children at this age or stage of development 
the concrete operational stage can now classify things, objects, and ideas. Marunong na sila mag-classify. Alam na nila na yung Labrador, yung Bulldog, yung Golden Retriever, yung Shih Tzu, yung um, Ascal, are all kinds of dogs. They can classify things according to a set criteria. So, parang ganito, nag-harvest ng mangga ang iyong uncle. Sabi niya sa iyo, to, oh, paki-classify ba kaling mangga? Anong gagawin ng bata? Yung mga magkakawig-hawig ng size, depende kung anong sasabihin ng uncle, ha? Yung mga malalaki, iwalay mo kasi iba, ibibinta natin yan. Yung mga maliliit sa atin, anong gagawin ng bata? He will separate the big ones from the small ones. Or sabihin ng uncle, piliin mo anak yung mga makikinis kasi nga pambenta. Yung medyo may COVID <laughs> na mangga sa atin. <laughs> yung ganon. They know how to classify. They know how to categorize. And you already understand the concept of conservation. Plus, part, whole, relations. Alam na nila na Manila is a part of the Philippines. So pag sinabi mo sa kanilang they live in Manila, intindi na nila din na sila ay nasa Pilipinas. The Philippines is the whole, Manila is the part. They now understand that the part, Manila, is a part of the whole Philippines. Diba sabi na, sabi na naman, Di ba kanina mayroon tayong example? Sabi ng bata na wala pang ganitong pagkakaunawa. Hindi naman ako nakatira sa Pilipinas eh. Dito lang kami sa Manila. See? Nasa kwanyo, no? Nasa pre-operation, no? Especially in the first uh, stages, early stages of the pre-operational stage. Um, yeah, development. Pero dito, they already understand part-whole relations. So yun pang ibig sabihin dyan. Children of this age, ano nga pa ulit ang ano nga pa ulit ang edad ng nasa uh, nasa concrete operational stage 6 or 7 hanggang 11 or 12. So, children of this stage, children in the concrete operational stage of development can solve problems. They begin to solve problems, but only those problems that are based on concrete experience. Yung isang bagay na talagang na-experience nila in reality, in actuality. That is why in, in teaching, in the elementary, we need to relate or connect the lesson to their actual experiences. They are able to process new information if they can see how it is similar or related to their actual experiences. See, we should use, we should use familiar examples. Ewan ko kung napanggit ko na dito yung example na using magnets to introduce the concept of gravity. Kasi yung gravity, medyo mid, uh, malaki-laking concept yan eh. Kung baga sa pagkain, eh, malaking pagkain, mahir mahirapan silang lunokin. If uh, it is not uh, simplified or uh, divided into smaller chunks. So, sabi nga natin, in teaching, we should always start, as much as possible, no? We should always start with uh, the actual experiences of the children or an experience that at the very least is familiar to them. So that they will find it easier to connect old knowledge or prior knowledge with the new information that's coming in. Yung bagong lesson, may co-connect nila sa, na sa isang bagay that they have already actually experienced. E karamihan ng mga bata naglalaro ng magnets. Eh. So, ano ba, solar system. Uh, Introduce mo na yung uh, concept of attraction. Kasi kung gravity ka agad, ako, mahirapan yung mga bata. So, mag-umpisa ka doon sa gravity attraction yun eh. 
mga bata nakapaglaro pa kayo ng magnets, sigawan niya, yes ma'am, dami kong magnets. Sinira nga na ako to, no amo, transistor radio para makuha yung magnet. Yung kuha namin, yung TV, pinalakol ko, kunin ko yung magnet. Maglaro kami ng magnet, ma'am. Ano nangyayari pag mayroong magnet class? Ma'am, pinahigop, mga lansang, ibang bagay, na-attract sa kanila. Yan, introduce mo, mo yung concept of gravity. gravity. In the same way that magnets attract other things such as metals, there is also a force that enables heavenly bodies such as the sun to attract or pull other heavenly bodies. So hindi sila mahirapang i-process yung konsepto ng gravity. Even if it is a big concept, even if it is a new concept or information, Because they will just fuse the two concepts which both pertain to attraction. Pareho ang principle na. Magnets, attraction. Gravity, attraction. So we start with something that they have experienced uh, concretely. We use familiar examples. Okay? Uh, children in the stage of concrete of Teka, ito yata yung sinasabi ko kanina eh. This is what I was saying just a while ago, class. Two, two, uh, um, two glasses with equal amounts of, uh, of um, liquid. Kunyari ito, soft drinks. Ganda ng kulay niya eh. Kulay yelo. <laughs> itong pangalawang kwan, itong pangalawang baso. Teka. Pasaway na. Paano ko ba itong maituturo sa inyo? Ah, never mind, never mind. Ah, good ba itong, basta itong pangalawang baso, itong nasa gitna. Yan. Ah, its contents were transferred to the third container. Kunyari, third glass. Itong nasa right side ng ating picture. Hindi ba mas mababa siya, pero mas ma... Hmm, lapad. So naturally, if we transfer the liquid from the glass in the middle to the shorter but wider glass, naturally, the, the level of the liquid will go down. Kasi nga malapad siya. So pag pinag-compare ng bata uh, sa previous stage, sa pre-operational, sabihin niya, mas malaki pa rin yung nasa left side na baso. Hindi yung nasa gina, yung nasa left side. Kasi yung nasa gina, nilipat na natin yung content. Oh. Pwede rin ganito ang tanong sa mga sa bata. Alin dyan ang, alin dyan ang pinakamaliit ang soft drink na laman? Siyempre sasabihin niya, ito nasa right side. Ito mababa lang. Kasi nga mababa. Niya lang, pare-pareho yan lahat. Yan. Ang bata na wala pang sense of conservation, ganun ang magiging sagot. But children in the concrete operational stage already understand that the liquid is preserved conserved it just changed in shape because it was transferred to a container shaped differently but the amount the volume is still the same that's what we call conservation conservation concept ito yung sinabi natin kanina no? let us proceed to the next slide paano ba mag-isip ang isang nasa Oh, concrete operational state. Ano ang kanyang logika? How does his logic work? Piaget determined that children in the concrete operational state were fairly good at the use of inductive logic. Magaling sila sa reasoning, but inductive logic, inductive reasoning, hindi pa masyado sa deductive logic. Ibig sabihin ng deductive logic, Uh, we start from specific examples, we start from specific instances, and then we combine these examples, these instances, and proceed to the general principle that govern their relationship. Inductive logic. Parang ganito. Uh, inductive. The, the big concept is 
revolution around the sun. Mercury, sabi ng teacher, revolves around the sun. Inductive ito, inductive. Venus revolves around the sun. The earth revolves around the sun. Um, Mars revolves around the sun. Jupiter revolves around the sun. Um, what about Saturn class? What do you think? Do you think it revolves around the sun? What about Uranus? Do you think it revolves around the sun? What about uh, Pluto? Kunyari, planet pa rin yung Pluto, no? Hindi na raw planet yan ngayon, eh. What do you think? Do they also revolve around the sun? Sabi nila, yes. Eh, kasi nga, inductive yun, eh. Specific examples muna of planets revolving around the sun. Then the rest is left out for them to guess the general principle that governs such relationship. Nagagawa nila yung ganyan. Pero pag sinabing, halimbawa, eh, reverse natin ng no deductive. Heavenly bodies revolve around the sun. Nandun kagad yung general principle. Pedro, do you think Saturn revolves around the sun? Nahihirapan yung mga bata kasi deductive yun eh. Para bang, it's, it's, a, it's a big concept because they have to think of the entire solar system and heavenly bodies revolving around the sun. Malaking concept din. Kung baga nga sa pagkain ay malaking pagkain, malaking chunk of pagkain, big chunk of food, which they have to ram and stuff into their mouth and swallow everything all at once. Mahirap yun sa mga bata sa concrete operational stage. So what do we do? We use specific examples first to show the relationship that we want them to understand. Then show another example. Then show another example. Then show another example. If you think that you have already given them enough number of examples, ask them the principle. See, that's inductive logic. They can do that. They are good at that. They are adept at doing that. Inductive logic. Inductive reasoning. They are better at inductive logic than deductive logic. The skill, the, 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 the ability uh, to perform deductive uh, logic or deductive reasoning will come later when they finally reach the um, formal operational stage, which is the last st uh, developmental uh, stage. So that's the point here, no? That's the point here. Reversibility. Um, parang na discuss na natin, no? Reversing a process or a relationship. A child might be able to recognize that his or her dog is a Labrador, that a Labrador is a dog, and that a dog is an animal. Okay, this is what we were saying just a while ago. They are now able to process relationships and reverse them. Di ba kanina, pag maliit pang bata, hindi niya maintindihan na, oh, hindi, na hindi niya maintindihan na yung kanyang nanay uh, ay anak ng kanyang lola. Kasi ang tingin niya, pagkakaunawa niya, dahil lola niya ito ay lola din ito ng kanyang nanay. Kasi that's the kind of relationship that he knows. A lola. So, alimbawa ako yung bata, no? Si Lola Marta. Uh, si Lola Marta ay aking lola. Si nanay ko, si Lola Ana, ay lola din niya si Lola Marta kasi si Lola Marta ay, ay lola ko. Yan bang? Uh, hindi niya ma-grasp sa kanyang isip na uh, iba naman ang kanilang relationship bilang bilang nanay at anak. Hindi niya mag-grasp na uh, yung, yung lola niya ay may anak at siya ay anak na nung 
ni Ana. Ako, a- ako, hindi ko mag na ako ay anak ni Ana, si Ana ay anak ni Lola. At ibabalik yung relationship. Uh, si Lola, anak ni si Ana. Ako, anak ni Ana. Yan, yan ang ibig sabihin ng reversibility. Sa mga batang malili, they do not have this ability. But, in the concrete operational stage, children get the ability, they begin to understand that relationships can be reversed. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng reversibility. Children uh, begin to understand that relationships can be reversed. This happens in the concrete operational stage. Yeah. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, we are now on the last stage of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. Formal operational stage. This usually starts at the end of 12 and lasts into adulthood. So pagpatak natin ng 12 years old, uh, usually nasa grade 6 tayo na, no? Or if we uh, develop cognitively a little bit late, pag akit na ng high school. So what happens here? People develop the ability to think about abstract concepts. Yeah. We can now process hypothetical information. Katulad natin, katulad nyo, katulad ko. They, we can process hypothetical situations or abstract concepts because we already have enough understanding of the world. We already have enough understanding of events, of people, of ideas. So we can now process things even if we do not see them in reality or in actuality. Even if we do not see something happen actually, we can process them in our mind. We can imagine things. We can process abstract ideas or concepts. We are already capable of logical thought. Magaling na tayo sa reasoning kasi nga mga matured learners tayo, mga matured individuals. Deductive reasoning. So you see, di ba sabi natin kanina, kapag nasa pre-operational, kapag nasa concrete operational stage, uh, they can also do deductive reasoning but not as much as they can perform inductive reasoning. Mas magaling sila sa inductive reasoning. Sa formal operational stage, sa, sa stage na ito, no? 12 years old, hanggang mag-adult na, hanggang katapos na. Deductive reasoning. And also systematic planning. We already know how to plan systematically. Yung mga bata, walang kaplano-plano yan. Uh, walang, walang system sa pagpaplano. They, they, they flow with, with things as they happen. They do not plan systematically. Tanungin mo yung grade 1. O, ano bang plano mo sa buhay? Imagine grade 1. Ano bang malay niyan sa mga plano sa buhay? Ano bang malay niyan sa buhay? Totoo, grade 1 ka rin ng plano mo sa buhay. Sagutin ka nun. Loko ko pa. Alam mo, grade 1 ako pa. Tatanungin mo ko ng plano mo sa buhay. So you see. Okay. So as we have already said, we are already capable of uh, processing abstract concepts, no? We already have that capacity. We already have that capability to process in our minds abstract concepts or ideas. We can solve complex problems. Yung mga mahirap na problema, hindi lang problema sa math, no? Kundi all kinds of problems. Even if they are complex, we can process them. We can generate solutions to difficult problems because of the experiences that we have had in life because of the things that we have learned so far, because of the things that we have, the skills that we have acquired. We can use symbols such as letters, numbers, and other, and others. Maraming symbols sa mundo eh. Tas mo yung kamay mo at naka fist, no? And then put up your middle finger and your forefinger. Yeah, symbol yan, peace. Walang drawing, just imagine the hand. Uh, they can solve, we can solve, not children or people individ- or individuals in the formal operational stage can process or perform complex mathematical equations. Uh, maliba na lang kung talagang mahina sa mathematics. Hindi lang mathematics ang, ang pinang problema natin sa buhay, as I was saying just a while ago. This can refer to any kind of problem. Analyze a poem, a problem din yun. Hindi ka lang magkocompute, but it's still an, a mental problem. 
or understand the effects of the Earth's rotation <laughs> on the seasons. During this stage, remember, tayo ay nasa formal operational stage, the fourth stage in the, the fourth and the final stage in Jean Piaget's cognitive development or stages of development. And as already mentioned, this uh, usually starts from the age of 12 and lasts into adulthood. So, nabanggit na natin kung ano mga nangyayari dito, no? We can process abstract concepts or hypothetical situations. We become adept at uh, deductive reasoning. We are very good in logic, things like those, which uh, are uh, just to be expected from people uh, belong to, belonging to this, to this um, stage of cognitive development. Kung nasa edad na natin, hindi pa, hindi pa tayo marunong ng tamang logika, something is wrong with the, with the way our mind works. Okay. Uh, during this stage, uh, people can understand multiple viewpoints. People can understand that people can uh, have different opinions than they, they do, that they can feel differently about different things from them. Parang, kung lang ba, pagkakaunawa ng pagkakaiba-iba ng mga tao in terms of feelings, in terms of opinions. Yeah. They can also answer what-if questions, hypothetical what-if questions. Halimbawa, uh, what if uh, China invades us? What will happen? What-if question yun. It's a hypothetical situation. Mga bata, they cannot process that kind of question. Sa atin, nasa, uh, nasa formal operational states, we can answer these kinds of questions because we are already capable of uh, uh, answering or processing hypothetical situations or hypothetical questions. Hindi natin nakikita in reality. Hindi naman tayo sina sinasakop ng China. So, paano nga natin makikita yun in reality? How are we going to see it in actuality? Kaya nga siya tinawag na hypothetical eh. Imaginary situation. We can process these kinds of questions. We can answer these kinds of questions. Why? Because we are already in this level where we have learned enough. We have acquired enough mental or cognitive skills to do it. Compared with very young children, hindi pa nila talaga yan kaya. Kaya nga pinag-aaralan natin yung stages of development so that we will know how to deal with children, what kind of questions we're going to ask. Great, tutanungin mo, ano sa palagay yung mangyayari pag sinakop tayo ng China? They cannot answer that kind of question. They do not have yet the ability to process hypothetical questions. Alright. Um, so, uh, they can, sino itong they dito? Bakit may they? Who are this they? Sino itong mga ito? Okay. Children in the formal uh, stage of development can uh, use symbols and abstract ideas without having to exper experience them firsthand. Kahit hindi nila nagagawa, kahit hindi nila naranasan, they can process them in their minds. And that is why they can perform complex uh, problem solving. Yung isang bagay na problema na paprocess nila na susulat na na sasagutan kasi nga they can they, they can see in their minds they can process in their minds things that do not exist in reality very very young children cannot do that okay paano ba tayo magisip what kind of logic do we have how do we reason out how do we uh, how does our reasoning work deductive logic uh, becomes well established here in this particular stage Deductive logic requires the ability to use a general principle to determine a specific outcome. So from general principle, from a general law, we are able to determine or guess or predict a specific result or outcome. Ah, ganito ang mangyayari kasi ganito ang principle which governs it. Yeah. We are able to do that because of our ability to grasp uh, things more broadly. Malawak ang tingin natin, malawak ang pangunawa. So we can start with a big picture in our mind and apply this to smaller instances or examples. 
So that's called uh, deductive uh, deductive logic. Yeah, deductive logic. This type of thinking involves hypothetical situations and is often required in science and mathematics. Well, it's it's not only in science, no. Although most of the time we, we use uh, logic or deductive logic and deductive reasoning science and and mathematics, but we do this kind of reasoning in almost all areas of our life, even in non-science and in non-mathematics uh, subjects. Yung hindi science, yung hindi mathematics, ginagamita ng logika. Oh, Alright. Oh. Ano bang ganito? Nagmahal ang gasolina. What do we expect to happen in the price of other commodities? As adults, we are able to predict that the prices of other commodities will also like will also be very likely to increase because we already understand the relationship between those commodities and gasoline or oil. We know we understand that um, manufacture of such goods, such commodities require the use of machines that require the use of fuel gasoline or other forms of fuel nagmahal ang gasolina or fuel therefore magmamahal ang presyo ng asukal mantika toyo magmamahal ang presyo ng sardinas noodles dahil lahat ng yan ay ginagawa ng makina at ang makina ay gumagamit ng gasolina deductive reasoning. We are able to do that. Kasi nga malawak na yung tingin natin sa mundo, sa buhay. Eh, sa, sa dami ba naman ang experiences natin eh? Because of the number of things that we have seen, because of the number of experience, experiences that we have had in our life, we are able to acquire this ability to grasp the big picture, the big idea, the big concept, and apply it to smaller examples or smaller instances. That's what we call deductive logic magagaling sa deductive logic ang mga individuals mga taong nasa uh, formal operational states of cognitive development okay kain muna ako ng strepsil ha kasi dyan ang mga kapatid at, uh, ito ang pang palamig ko ng aking kalalamunan ng aking throat if I do not eat this, I cannot finish the lecture. I have been speaking for more than two hours already. Kung hindi ako mag strip sales, magkakasabit-sabit na naman ang ating boses. Hindi tayo makakatapos, mga kapatid. Pagpasensyahan nyo na lang ang tunog ng candy sa, microphone, sa, 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 sa video. Let us continue. Makulit ito ah. Sabi nga natin, they can process, they can process, <laughs> process ha? they can process, they can process hypothetical situations and perform deductive logic. Katatapos lang yun eh. Ito, abstract thought. Siguro naman at this point, no, I, I am already expecting that at this point, we already understand the word abstract. We have encountered this in our discussions, in our pre previous discussions so many times. I have discussed with you the difference between abstract concepts, abstract ideas versus concrete events, concrete objects, no? Concrete, abstract. Ini, inaasahan ko na, umunawaan na natin ang pagkakaiba sa uh, dalawang yan. Pagkakaiba ng dalawang yan. Sa isa, isa. So, children, as we have already mentioned before, uh, can only process concrete um, concrete uh, ideas and concepts. Meaning yung talagang nakikita nila in real and actual existence. They do not yet have the ability to uh, process abstract and hypothetical concepts or hypothetical situations. Children does, do not have the ability to process hypothetical situations. Whereas, adults can. 
Because we do not rely on previous experiences all the time. We can use our logic, we can use our reasoning to predict the outcome uh, of a hypothetical situation. Yung mga tanong na, halimbawa, uh, may dumating na uh, aliens. No? We were visited by creatures from other planets. Halimbawa, may pumunta ditong aliens. How are we going to welcome them to our planet? Yun, hypothetical situation yan. Even if we have never seen aliens before, even if this does not happen in reality or in actuality, we can still answer the question. We can still process this in our mind. That's what we call abstract thought. That is what we call hypothetical situation. Bakit siya nasasagot natin? Bakit natin siya na process? Eh kasi nga, our, in, our, our maturity, our experiences in life, the knowledge of the world and things that we have acquired, the cognitive or mental or intellectual abilities and skills we have acquired, enable us to do it. Yeah. Abstract thought. This is very important in making long-term planning, which is uh, often done by adults, by mature learners, by mature individuals. We are capable of making long-term plans. Children are not. Yeah. In terms of problem solving, simply children cannot compete with adults in terms of problem solving. Yeah. In, in the earlier stages of cognitive development, usually among very young children, they usually use uh, trial and error method to solve problems. They usually uh, employ trial and error. Hindi ka nasolve sa ganito, itatry ko ulit ito. Ayaw pa rin. Subukan kita ng pag-ganito. Pachamba-chamba baga. Trial and error. Adults uh, also sometimes engage in the trial and error method of solving problems, but most of the time, we use logic. We use uh, proper reasoning. No. We use systematic, logical, and methodolic, uh, method, methodical ways of solving problems. Systematic, logical, methodical way of solving problems. People, individual, children, at the formal operational stage, meaning the states we are talking right about now, no? We are talking about right now, I mean. Like us, we are already in this particular state. We are often able to quickly plan. We can make a plan uh, in an instant, no? Or if not in an instant, within a shorter period of time compared to the length of time required by, 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 by younger individuals. Ah, uh, kaya kapag plano ka agad tayo. Dahil nga sa ating experience. Mm. We can make plans as to how a problem can be approached in a systematic, in a logical and methodical way so that it can be solved. So that it will be solved. Alam natin kung paano nga approach ang isang problem para sa masolod. We can make plans. We can strategize. No? We can we can uh, we can plan. Parang magkitches na may plan kung paano nga atak ang kalaban at kung paano nga defend yung iyong mga pyesa. Okay, so let's recapitulate. So remember, our topic this uh, time, our topic today, is all about the four stages of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. Ganda ng, ganda ng pangalan niya, no? Jean Piaget. Jean ka muna, may bibili lang ako sa tindaka. What are the four stages of cognitive development? 
according to Jean Piaget, well, going back to our discussion, the four stages of cognitive development, uh, review tayo or recapitulation. First, the sensory motor states. And then the pre-operational states. And then we have the concrete operational states. And then finally, we have the formal operational states. We have just discussed each of these stages of cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. At what age, at what approximate age, each stage begins or starts, and what approximate age, each stage ends. Then, in opinion, you know, we also talked about the most important developments, the most important changes in the person, in the individual, in the child, that occur or happen in each stage. Diniscuss natin po yan isa-isa kanina sa bawat stage. We also uh, discuss the different forms, kinds of behavior that individuals or learners in each stage of cognitive development show, demonstrate, or manifest. Ayun po ang mga pinag-usapan natin sa bawat isang stage of cognitive development na ito according to Jean Piaget. So I hope that after our discussion, after this module, after watching this video, and after some reflection, no, you now understand why children behave the way they do. Why do they behave differently? Why do they process information this way? Why does this child uh, answer questions this way? And why does that child over there answers another way? Bakit itong batang ito pa mas mature mag-isip? Mas magaling sumagot ng mga hypothetical questions kaysa sa batang ito? We should already know how to answer those questions. We should already have ideas regarding the answers to, the square, to, the, uh, to those questions. Ang pinakadulo nito, class, uh, the, 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 um, the ultimate goal here is for us, teachers, for you, future teachers, to uh, gain deeper insights into the behavior of children Particularly the way their mind works. Particularly how they think and how they process information. In other words, our ultimate purpose here is to gain a deeper understanding of uh, our learners' cognition. That's the ultimate purpose here. So I hope that you have learned something from this video. I hope that I have imparted the some information, some knowledge no? uh, to you regarding the four stages of cognitive development. And I hope that when the time comes that you become professional teachers, you can put into action, you can put into actual application this knowledge of how children think, how they process information, how they use logic, how they reason, how they answer hypothetical questions, and so on and so forth. Cognition. So that will be uh, all for, uh, for today. We are going to end there temporarily. Of course, there are more upcoming videos, kasi may natitira pa tayo yung mga topics, lined up for cluster one. Um, 
So I will I will end there for the meantime. Goodbye to everybody. See you again on, on our next online class. See you again on the next video. Uh, ingat po kayo lahat. Everybody, let us all stay safe. No, Stay safe po tayo lahat. God bless everyone.